We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to AEW Unrestricted. Aubrey and Will here today to talk to uh, not one, but two guests. Two of my absolute favorite people in the world. We have Evil Uno and we have Chugs, a.k.a. Adam Cole. But from here on out, we'll be known as Chugs because we are talking about the All Elite Arcade podcast, which I am so excited about. I'm a subscriber. Make sure you check it out, all your favorite podcast platforms. I want to talk a little bit about how this podcast came to be. And I know because I'm in meetings every week with Evil Uno for the AEW Games team. Uno, could you talk a little bit about how this, this idea was birthed and sort of the creation of it? For sure. Uh, You know, AW uh, produces this fine podcast right now. And so there's an established podcasting world within AW. And uh, me and Chugs have, for maybe two years now, have been talking about making more video game content together. And one of the things we like to do the most is just talk about either recent gaming news or like recent trailers or what the games were actively playing. And so we've always been flirting with this idea of, of, of flirting. potentially you like that. You like the use of I flirting. I like flirting. That? Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been flirting with the idea of, of eventually making a podcast and um, eventually the, you know, the, the stars aligned and uh, we, we started our journey doing Twitch content together uh, as an all elite arcade Twitch piece. And uh, we just realized that uh, more ears and more eyes would eventually see it if we turned this into an ongoing weekly podcast. And it makes it, it was just a simpler format for us to follow because we live in different areas. Uh, you know, uh, he is from America. I'm still living in Canada. And, and uh, you know, the nature of our job is that we travel every week. And so this seemed like the natural evolution of our passions for video game. It's been, it's been a very exciting journey as of yet. I mean, so, you know, gaming happens to be to kind of bond all of us, right? I feel like Chugs in particular, you and I, the conversations you and I have more than anything else yeah. are usually about video games, rarely ever about wrestling at all. <laughs> right. It's nice that it's one of those things that kind of bonds wrestling fans and, and gives them uh, something to kind of get some insight into a lot of what makes us tick as, as people. But for you, this is not something new. You've been kind of in this gaming avenue for a very long time, I'll say. Otherwise, that's how people know you as Chugs. But I want to give people kind of a little bit of background on you in this role and how people have come to know you through your Twitch and everything you've been doing for years prior to AEW. Sure. So I'm going back a little bit further. Video games have always been something that have been a massive part of my life. Uh, For example, I talked about this on the first episode of All Elite Arcade, but my first memory, not gaming memory, my first memory of my entire life was I was three years old and I ran downstairs. It was really early in the morning and I ran downstairs and I see that my dad is sitting in front of the TV playing the Sega Genesis and he's playing Road Rash and he got the best bike in the game. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you got the best bike, dad. Oh, this is so cool. So video games were always in my household growing up. However, around nine years old is when I became just absolutely obsessed with pro wrestling. So my brother, my younger brother, he's been so into gaming his entire life. And I always loved them, but I wouldn't say I devoted like a ton of time into them. Like if he had some buddies over to play Halo, I would jump in on the LAN parties. I have great memories with a lot of PlayStation 1 titles like FF7, Resident Evil 2, Metal Gear Solid, games like that. But I truly fell in love, I would say, with video games. Actually, in 2015, there was a point where, again, pro wrestling was all that I did. I had no hobbies, no other interests. If I had some chill time, I would sit down and and watch wrestling. And I remember sitting there thinking, you know, it'd be cool to have like a hobby outside of work. Of course, (laughs) wrestling is my love. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) I was like, I I should probably have something I I do outside of of work. And one day my brother came home, I was living with him at the time, and Halo 5 had just dropped. And I'm like, I remember Halo. I said, hey, do you mind if I hop on your Xbox and, and play some of the Halo 5 campaign? Long story short, I stayed up until like seven or eight in the morning and beat the whole campaign. The next day I bought an Xbox One, the rest was history. So, um, it, sorry, I'm rambling now. I just get so excited great. talking about games. <laughs> but but I, I, I had been wanting to stream for the longest time. 
but I always made excuses in my head, whether it was my schedule. It seemed so daunting, the idea of like learning all this new stuff about how to stream and things like that. But then the pandemic hit and it was like, I have no excuse anymore. I have all the time in the world. Mm -hmm. I really want to do this. I want to talk to people who are passionate about games like I am. And I started streaming during the pandemic and now it's turned into a thing that I, I mean this. I, I tell the chat all the time. I will never stop doing this until I can't anymore. I love it so much. I love the community aspect of it. I love the the passion of video games. It's become one of my absolute favorite things in the world. So yeah, video games are very important to me. Very, very important. I also want to say that, as you say, like your first memory is with the Genesis. I immediately felt old because I'm like, yeah. dude, that was like my third system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, NES, the old brick, like gray Game Boy, like that was my jam. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Also a classic. Legit, though, you popped me so hard with Road Rash, though, because like I remember because oh. uh, I didn't get into Road Rash until the Sega channel. Uh, for mm. those who don't remember what oh. that was, Boy. I remember I was just going through the list and I found Road Rash 2 was the first one I had played. Oh. It changed my life and it, like the music. Yeah. So when you mention that game, like it does so much for me because Road Rash Innovative. was seriously a game changer for the Sega Genesis. I agree. I agree. All right. We, we could probably just talk about Road Rash on this whole <laughs> oh, like, oh, absolutely. absolutely. I can, I can we can talk about minutes on Sega alone. Sega <laughs> yeah. alone. <laughs> yeah, for sure. At the forefront of a lot of what uh, you see in gaming nowadays. You, the channel, but also Dreamcast having DLC and the internet access. Yeah. All that. That's all stuff that Sega did before everyone else. But People forget that the Sega Saturn had, was the first console with triggers. That yes, like everybody yeah, well. had shoulder buttons, but mm -hmm. the Saturn analog controller had triggers. Changed the game. Yeah, dude, memory cards with friggin' screens on them. Oh yeah, as a Dreamcast, like the Neo Geo. Oh uh, yeah, so this cool. okay. We've turned into a nostalgia <laughs> podcast here on the AEW Unrestricted. <laughs> well, I want to ask you, um, Evo Uno. Uh, the, the, uh, I want to ask you what your origins with gaming are. My, some of my first memories are of video gaming. I, I, I remember Christmas when I was four, getting my NES, and I, the you know, I have video footage of this, so probably that is why it's one of my first memories. I can revisit it, but. My journey uh, is that I've, I've constantly been playing video games since I was a child. It's always been one of my main passions. I started professional wrestling at the age of 14. And so it's been the entirety of my life. But if I had a secondary passion that I've invested in, it's always been video gaming. It became more than just something I did uh, when I was a teenager, when uh, Super Mario 64 came out, I remember oh. the exact time it came out uh, because in Canada, we had had this giant ice storm. And so my house had no power. I had to move into a hotel for several weeks because my father wanted to make sure that we didn't think it was going to be, you know, the end of the world or, or a catastrophe. He thought like, okay, I'll, I'll, di I'll divert the attention. I'll get him the new N64 and I'll get him, you know, Super Mario 64. And it worked, Dad. It did. <laughs> <laughs> it, it turned my life around. I, I started looking at video games as no longer something I played, but like an art form. And, you know, yep. part of that was like that jump to 3D, but like realizing that people worked on this, that that there had to be an artist that worked on the music. There had to be an artist that worked on the, the, the graphical scaling and, and the way everything was structured and the storytelling and all that. I started seeing it and a lot of other pieces in media in a different light. And since then, I've, I've done, I've dabbled a lot in video game stuff. I, I, I ran a YouTube channel for over seven years. I was Twitch streaming 13 years ago. I Twitch streamed 13 years ago for about six years. I took a little break a uh, year before the pandemic. I restarted into it. I do not Twitch stream nearly as much as, as uh, the Chugs does here, but, uh, you know, I, I still am an active, uh, uh, member of that community and I try to, go on there and play video games. I've done also gaming media stuff. I've done gaming review stuff. Uh, I used to uh, Giant Bomb, which is a a, mm -hmm. um, a content distributor for video game. I used to yeah. work uh, in cohesion with them as well. Uh, so I've, I've done a lot of gaming stuff. It's always been an avenue that I've wanted to explore on the side to wrestling because someday... Let's let's hope it is not anytime soon, but someday I won't be able to wrestle anymore. But I do think there is still an avenue in my life where I can explore uh, video game and video gaming content for, you know, until I'm I'm extremely old and can't possibly see the video games I'm playing. So it's it's always been an avenue I've been interested in and it's always been an avenue I've invested a lot of my time in. And uh, and that's kind of why we 
we continue doing it today. Yeah. I think it's one of those, as long as you have thumbs and fingers and can hold a controller, you can play video games. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's it's been really great seeing like our generation grow up as like, this is a normal thing. Like it used to just be a thing that kids played, right? And as soon as Uno is talking about like, oh yeah, I opened a Genesis on Christmas. I pictured that like N64 kid on Christmas, like that GIF. Oh yeah. The Genesis GIF! I'm like, that's Same actually here. Uno's long lost brother. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be a clip of me for all you know. So. <laughs> it could be. Someone's going to Photoshop your mask on it and just be like, look, it's Uno. This is exactly how it happened. Real life. There's a lot more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted. Uh, I'm particularly interested in like more about the podcast aspect of All Elite Arcade, but we got to take a real quick break as, as Uno says and quick a word from our sponsors so coming up here on aew unrestricted it's aew unrestricted we've got aubrey will uno chugs we're talking video games we're talking the new podcast definitely check out the all elite arcade podcast on all of your favorite podcast platforms like subscribe do all the fun stuff like support these boys because they are doing incredible things i love hearing people who are passionate talk about the things that they are passionate about which in in yeah. saying that out loud it's like yeah duh no shit but it's like <laughs> <laughs> you could you you it's know true. when someone cares about the thing that they're talking about and it's great a little bit in the first segment like uno i talked about like wanting to sort of move into a podcast medium but you guys are both started in sort of the the twitch streaming realm and then did the all elite arcade show on twitch what has been the biggest change for you guys? And I guess we'll start with Chugs on this one. What is big, the biggest change for you guys moving to a podcast platform? The biggest change for me is the excitement at the idea of me and Uno getting to just talk games. Mm-hmm. Like th- This is going to sound wild, but I-, I think a big reason for me that I was so excited about starting this podcast with him is... Uno will tell you this as well. I can't tell you how many times it'd be like, we have an hour, hour and a half to do a Twitch stream. And this might be wild to say, there were so many episodes where I'm like, I kind of rather just want to talk to you about games for an hour and a half instead of even playing them because we both love to play them. But it's just, we both are so passionate in our own ways about games. And he'll say something that I find really interesting or a game that I want to check out. And I like to think sometimes I do the same for him, but there's just (laughs) such a passionate discourse uh, in this world. So the biggest change for me is just the excitement of knowing I get to spend all this time getting to talk video games with one of my favorite people. That is the most important thing to me, for Aww. sure. Aww. I mean it. I mean it. My heart is so warm right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is too. <laughs> Uno, what about you? Same question. I, you know, I, I love Twitch streaming with with Chugs, and uh, and I like Twitch mm-hmm. streaming on my own as well. But it's uh, the biggest change from one to the other is structure, I think. Uh, you know, our podcast is a lot more structured. We have we've we have topics we actually want to tackle. Yeah. You know, having a, a discussion about the weekly news and engaging with that is something that I know interests us and will probably interest others. But when we're doing Twitch streaming, a lot of what we want to do is also interact with people. So mm. we don't want to get into like a 20, 25 minute tirade because then we're not interacting with the live viewer. And that kind of, that's what the Twitch experience is supposed to be about. It's about uh, having a one-on-one discussion with someone or at least having some form of impact on the content that you're watching. And I, I like Twitch streaming. I'm not saying anything wrong with Twitch streaming. I love that approach to to content. But in a podcast, I'm talking solely to chugs uh, in this instance. And so we finally get to, you know, explore all of the topics that we want to rather than than kind of uh, piecemeal it as it goes on. You know, it's a lot less free form. Uh, this one is a little a lot more structured. Our opinions and what we're going to discuss about it and, and and what each of us wants to say about each piece of topic is obviously not planned. But Knowing that, uh, okay, I, for for a portion of this podcast, I'll, I'll be able to talk about what we're actively playing right now, and I'll get to, to joyfully talk about uh, you know Helldivers two or yeah. you know, the new Fortnite updates, or, or or Chugs and I can spit ten minutes straight about Elden Ring, which we've done I think every episode as of yet. I think every episode, every episode, <laughs> and, and then knowing that, like, okay, at some point we can then have another thirty minutes to discuss you know, the weekly topics, because there's so much going on. Video game is the largest media form now. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, You know, it used to be TV, it used to be movies, but now there are more video games released daily than I can count. Open a computer, go to a Steam page, GOG, go to the 
itch.io, whatever, per day, there are at least 20 games that are going out there. More than that. I'm sure. Those are just the ones you notice. <laughs> if not, yes. If that doesn't count mobile, that doesn't count browser, that doesn't count updates to the games and so on. So it's, it's a medium that has so much content to explore. And so there's like this huge sense of discovery that we can do with the podcast or when we can dedicate more time to smaller stuff or, or, or new stories that affect some of the, the video games. So it's been a very exciting uh, journey to jump from the Twitch side to the podcasting. Yeah. Well, with there being so much video game content out there, how do you decide what exactly topics you're going to cover for that week? Usually we have a we have a, a little formal discussion beforehand of stuff. Yep. As the week progresses, I take notes of stories that I think are, are either important to discuss or I know either myself or Chugs will be excited for. So, yeah. you know, if there's a Soulsborne game that's that's getting some steam, I know we're going to have to talk about it because I know Chugs is is deeply involved in in that type of game. If 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 they announce Indie Digital Showcase, that speaks to both of us. So much so. Like we we could probably per 20 minutes that get dropped every few weeks, there's an Xbox one that's coming up soon. I know he and I could discuss for hours Every single bit of trailer, talk about the development people that are behind it. Like, I, I know that's stuff that can interest us. So when, as our week progresses, I constantly take little notes of what I would like to discuss. And then we have a little formal meeting in case he has extra stuff he wants to add to the list. Or we'll also scope with our team other stories because there's stuff that I may not be interested in or he may not be interested in that we still should discuss. You know, I, I completely... Uh, glossed over a a topic recently about you know uh, VR losing a lot of money, and I, I didn't even consider discussing it. But that's like a large topic, and that's a oh brother, I worked at a VR company. I could go into all of that because we lost money. I got laid off, and that's how I ended up at AEW. <laughs> hey, hey uh, in the end, oh, wow. everyone wins, right? So yeah, but uh, yeah, <laughs> so that that's kind of how we do it. Uh, Chugs on his end plays so much that he comes in fully loaded with opinions on on things he's playing too well well and going off of what uno had said aside from us deciding like the major news stories that we want to discuss that to me has been the most fun is there is like every single episode so far uno will come in and say hey you know i heard about this or i'm really excited about playing this and sometimes i'm like oh i didn't know about that but also i played this or i want to talk about this thing that's going to release soon mm -hmm. and he goes oh great because like we had mentioned at the start of this there is so much happening every single day in the world of video games. So for both of us to like ping pong ideas off each other and decide what we want to talk about, I think creates an exciting thing. And Aubrey, going off what you said, if you're passionate about it and you're excited to talk about it, that transcends and that shines through. That's what made the podcast so much fun so far. So I'm curious because there is so much to talk about in games. And like one of the things you bring up is that like there's so many games released every day, but then there's the mobile aspect of it. And as someone who has such an extensive background in mobile, mobile gaming and like free to play became a big thing. And everyone who is from sort of the traditional PC console era was like, that's not real video games. But like it is the amount of money that is just generated through that that medium alone is insane. Like the amount of people that play freaking Candy Crush still is is wild. Right. So with there being so much that you guys can discuss, cause like you could even talk about like video games as movies, like Mario, Sonic, all of these things mm -hmm. that have happened. Like, is there anything not on the table with you guys? For, for me, no, there's nothing not on the table. I, I really do love so many different aspects of gaming. Actually, recently we did talk about how great the video game to movie slash TV show adaptation has gone in recent memory and how exciting that is. I mean this, every single aspect of the gaming industry is so fascinating to me. So I'm open to discuss anything and everything in regards to it. Uno, I don't know what you're thinking, but that's what I was thinking. I definitely feel the same. Like I, I, for yeah. us, uh, as long as it touches the world of video gaming, I think it's it's a safe space to do so. Yeah. Obviously, there are other things we're interested in. We could talk about movies that are unrelated. We could talk about TV shows that are unrelated or music and so on. But we, we really want to focus on the world of video games, be it a soundtrack that we think is incredible, be it a, a news piece, be it a mobile game, a DLC. Yeah. We, we also tackle controversial stuff. You know, we we just did a, a, a in an episode that's going to be released. We actually discuss some of our unpopular opinions about current video games and stuff. So we're 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 up to explore just about anything as long as it it has a light touch into the world of video games, and as long as we're passionate as, about it as well. If it's 
and I don't want to shame any games, but for example, like an update to The Sims speaks to a lot of people, but I don't, that doesn't reflect in my style of game. And so I can't speak to it properly and I can't get excited for it properly. So we may not discuss that stuff, but for example, the movies stuff, Fallout just came out recently. Fallout is doing an incredible amount of business for the franchise and has been reviewed so well that of course we should explore the mass medium of video games being brought to TV, being brought to movies, being brought to cartoons. You know, the uh, Cyber Runners was that what? the Cyberpunk one, the the Edge Runners, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, or Castlevania, or or how they're making a Golden Axe show, or The Last of Us. The, yep, the Last, Last of Us, of us really uh, well, yeah. Fallout, the Super Mario movie, the oh. Sonic movies. There's a third Sonic movie that's going to come out. That just shows. There's you. like a Sonic series coming out. The Knuckles thing, the, right? The, 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 yeah. Knuckles, the Knuckles show, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the TV show. The third one has Keanu Reeves as Shadow. I'm real excited yep. about it, dude. So, dude, I'm so pumped. Yeah. <laughs> but those movies have genuinely been excellent. Like I think excellent. there was the whole debate over Mario movie over the Sonic movie, and like. I I was a big fan of the Mario movie. So same, same. But I recognize yeah. that the Mario movie is a lot of fan service. Like if you walked into that movie without any background on Mario, you're probably like, "What is happening here?" That it is a lot of references and things to really like pop you as a Mario fan. But Sonic, mm-hmm. those are just genuinely good movies that mm-hmm. stand on their own. That it's like, hey, we took this character that you know from this video game series and all these elements, and yeah, there's the little things like the music, that stuff that's gonna pop you. But they're just genuinely good movies. Yeah, I have so much fun with that idea. I love that we got on this topic, by the way, of of the adaptation, of getting to give these stories that we've been in love with in video games for so long and and bring them to audiences that don't necessarily love video games. You know, my wife um, would never touch Last of Us as a game, right? But she was hooked every single episode as far as the series was concerned. Mm-hmm. And it was enough for her to now feel like, all right, this is a story I can get into. It just wasn't necessarily in an avenue I could have uh, attached to it. And so uh, I love that. And allowing people to explore these stories that we've been attached to for so long, I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. I was always, you can look at my background, people who watch video episodes know I was always into Mortal Kombat lore, right? Mm-hmm. I think Mortal Kombat's some of the greatest lore in video games. I couldn't like share that with somebody who didn't love video games, right? Like, and, and I just wanted to. And so even when like the Mortal Kombat movie, which was like designed to to solely pop me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I show it to somebody who's like, hey, this is kind of stupid. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't get it. Shang Tsung can take souls. Right. It's <laughs> 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 so true. So you know, true. You, we want it for so long to be able to share these stories with people who didn't necessarily play video games. And I think now is like the best time for that to be happening and it's so cool to see it at the level it's at right now the adaptations are so much better than when they the what they used to be you know Mm -hmm. like uh 20 30 years ago when they would make a video game movie they didn't really care about the lore of the video game itself there yeah so you see like that on the video podcast right now he's showing street fighter with john claude van damme which by the way I really enjoy it. I, love that I, movie. Think, I think it's an incredible movie, but I don't think it's an incredible movie based on the Street Fighter lore. I think it's just uh, as a standalone weird B movie, it's incredible. Uh, can we talk about the original Mario movie? Like, yeah, <laughs> same. I like that movie, but that has nothing to nothing. do with the, the series. You know, I have a theory that Street Fighter, and, and maybe this has been said somewhere, but I have this theory that it was just like a movie that was already written that they had like it was just like a military movie starring Jean-Claude Van Damme that was already written that they already had done and they're like you know the Street Fighter thing's kind of popular if we just like slap Street Fighter characters all over this and just call it Street Fighter will it be successful it's the super mario brothers 2 of movies <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that exactly that that's a that's perfect a great comparison. Yeah, that's perfect yeah <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> my credibility is showing sorry <laughs> yes no i love that but when you really think about that aubrey i mean think about how much from super mario 2 is like currently super mario lore and i always just think about how this wasn't a part of super mario at all but now it's just nope. in the lore and it exists like that. And it's like a hard thing to even Like, explain. why does Luigi flutter jump? Nobody knows, but it just made sense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. How is Birdo a thing? 
Right. Right? That's what I... Birdo is like a nonsensical character in the grand scheme of it. <laughs> like, shoots eggs out of a nose. And Birdo's still going strong in Super Mario Land. It is? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It is. Yeah. Like, it's insane, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can play as Birdo in Mario Kart. That just shows you the impact of that second one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Everything is lore. Oh, my God. I, could, I can't even get you started on, like, Mario lore and just, like, in, the, the amount of, like, time that people have spent in these games. Like, to think that there are games who could like if you just look at the age of them could like legally drink that is how long ago these <laughs> yeah. games were made right like the game that really like made me want to make games was ocarina of time Ugh. yeah no that's like uh over 20 years old now yeah oh, oh god like i've right. played that game on like how many sim- systems and how many times and like i uh, i'm just gonna put it out there i love the water temple it, it makes sense if you do it the right way like i'm just gonna put it out there I, i'll tell you the secret after the fact hard disagree but <laughs> we can keep going it's okay no no no. the secret is you start at the bottom you do everything you possibly can you go up each floor and you just keep repeating and the whole thing makes sense it's not confusing at all that's your little gaming tip for the day prime a strategy guide okay. all right good <laughs> yeah. yeah very good so so with all all of that happening in games and there being so much history do you guys have any recommendations for someone maybe listening to this podcast going man i really want to like get into games but like i don't know where to start uno what would be your recommendation honestly it seems like the most straightforward answer but there, i i would give you two so nowadays the the best way to get into video gaming is either play a mainline mario game because it is designed for people who may not necessarily play video games. It will it will introduce each of the patterns and then the the subjects and, and and the controls very early on. And then as it as you progress into it, it will ramp up difficulty, but in a way that it will the progress of it is is intended to be uh universal. It's not like you're playing a Dark Souls game. If you've never played a a previous game before dark souls is not the game you want to start not with. a good jumping point no <laughs> it's not the jumping point but mario you know those first few levels are designed to be easy so that when you get to the more challenging stuff you've learned how to to master the systems but my other suggestion and and maybe i don't think this is a this is a unpopular opinion but i think fortnite is an incredible video game for several reasons. One, it is not a difficult video game to understand. There, are, There's definitely tons of portions of it that you have to master. But being thrown on an island and surviving to the very last one is not a, a, a hard concept. Nope. And it is a game that is, one, free, accessible on so many systems, and has a player base that you can play with. So... If you are looking to share an experience with someone, that there is actively probably right now, if I were to open my console, over a million people playing Fortnite on all consoles. Mm-hmm. If you have friends who are into video games, chances are they have Fortnite downloaded on one of their consoles or PCs. They are capable of playing with you. So I think those two are are, are ones that are very easy to at least jump in at first. You can you can then explore the vastness of what video games is and the different styles from there. Uno, there was a, there was a second where I thought we were going to pick the same two games again. Again, <laughs> yeah, this is a pattern we have, yeah. <laughs> like like we did the last podcast episode. Because my answer is very similar to Uno's, so I won't dive into it too far. But like again, a Super Mario game is perfect as far as gameplay goes. Easy to understand, easy to play but also exciting enough to where you're like, oh, this is really interesting that when I get to this world, I have this ability or this skill, or I found this secret level and you still get that same type of excitement that you get from games. But if um, storytelling is more your forte and you've been so curious because you keep hearing about incredible storytelling within video games, again, The Last of Us is just a, to me, a life changing video game when it comes to the perspective of the incredible, incredible stories that video games can tell. So I would say either a Super Mario game, like Super Mario Bros. Wonder is incredible, mm. or a game like The Last of Us, as far as leaving an impactful memory in, in your brain. The Mario answer is such a good one. Uh, mm-hmm. I was hoping the example one of you would use was Odyssey because I feel like it's such oh, yeah. a... Odyssey's- oh, my God. Oh. Uh, Odyssey, I think, is like genuinely my favorite game of all time. I think that it... Just the way that it incorporates so many aspects of what we love most about gaming. And, and you know, if you like uh, open world games, no matter what it is that you like about video games, I feel like Mario Odyssey is going to give it to you in the best way possible. And it's so unique. Mar- a- Mario Odyssey is my favorite 3D Mario 
by a mile. Like, and I love Super Mario 64, but Odyssey is oh, yeah, it's so incredible good. soundtrack too. So good. Uh, and we've got so much more to talk about still. Uh, we're with the Chugs. We're with Evil Uno. We're talking all the arcade podcast right here on AEW Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted, Aubrey and Will talking to the Chugs and Evil Uno about all kinds of stuff. And this has just been a fantastic conversation. Like we've even realized in between segments when we're talking in commercial, like, oh my God, we're just talking about whatever we want. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really great. And it like reminds me of listening to your guys' podcast where it's literally just friends having a conversation about things they love. If you're into video games, like definitely subscribe to the All Elite Arcade podcast. It's awesome. It's incredible. I love hearing these two talk. There was a situation like a, a, a moment a while back where like I literally walk up to Chugs at work and go, okay, which one's better, Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild? And like we just immediately went into it. I think it was like 15 minutes just talking about the differences between these two Zelda games. Yep. And I was like, yeah, no, this one was my favorite. And then this one came out and it became my favorite. Like I literally just started my second playthrough of Tears of the Kingdom as soon as I was done with the first one. Really? It's, yo, yeah. dude, like I was just like, okay, now I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go through this and just do all the shrines first before I stick to the main story. Hmm. There's so many different ways to approach games. And there's so many different things that people are into and what they like to do. So I'm I'm curious like let's let's bring it to the the main argument and I think the main difference that comes up with gamers all the time Xbox versus PlayStation versus Switch versus PC. <laughs> Chugs, why don't you start? Like where where do you see yourself going to? God, I, I, people are going to hate this answer. But for anyone who knows me, <laughs> I, 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 I know what you're going to say. I wasn't starting too. a controversy, already, but <laughs> let me barge in because uh, uh, okay. uh, all right, Chugs is a known pacifist. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> I know he is sweating the second you told him to choose one. Uh, so whatever he's about to say, keep that in mind. <laughs> and again, I, I genuinely mean this. But I, I own all platforms. Mm -hmm. I play on all platforms. I love the Game Pass aspect of Xbox. I think it's incredible. Sony still to this day has some of the strongest single player story experiences in the world. Nintendo is off in its own little world with also incredible games like Mario, Metroid, Zelda, things like that. And PC is actually something that I jumped into very late and I'm still learning quite a bit about. Now that the Steam Deck has come out, that's really opened up my world when it comes to, to PC gaming. But it was something I did a little bit uh, before the Steam Deck came out, but that made it so much easier. So I have a VR headset. I play games on my phone. I'm an all platforms kind of guy. But if I had to pick Drum roll. my first love, my first console, I'm an Xbox guy. I knew Ooh. it. I knew you were going to say Xbox that. <laughs> yeah, yep. I relate to that so hard, I, I will say, and uh, probably for the same reason. But I have a launch copy, my original copy. I got it. I know it came out November 15th. I got mine November 18th, 2001, original Halo. Oh. I, got, I got it three days after it came out because I believe it launched on a Thursday and I wasn't able to get mine until that Sunday. Wow. But I have my original launch copy and that game changer changed my life mm -hmm. all things yep. halo change it changed, it changed the industry yep it really did well especially considering like first person shooters for the longest time were considered like the debate between pc gamers and console gamers was always you know oh you're playing first person shooters on a console what are you playing goldeneye like or mm -hmm. whereas you know quake players all of that yep. they were hardcore about their stuff quake doom command and conquer like all those it was like the pc yeah. like that's where you went for unreal that. tournament mm -hmm. yeah it, and they knew right yeah, unreal tournament and i was a big unreal mm -hmm. tournament player and it was like here. oh yeah it was hard to really get into the idea of first person shooters on a console they always felt like a lesser experience than what you could get on the pc until Halo. Mm -hmm. And Halo was the one that was like, this tells me that this is not only doable on a console, but it can almost be more immersive on a console. And granted, Halo did eventually come out on the PC, but it was like, I can have this experience and I can have this fun with friends. And you mentioned the LAN party earlier and like, that's yeah, the Halo LAN party was amazing. Four Xboxes with the Switch and 16 people. 100%. How many of us yeah. did that in high school, dude? <laughs> right, exactly. And, that, and that's yep. the thing, too, is Will, you're completely correct in that, like, as far as a console FPS game, we owe so much to Halo, without question. But seriously, looking back at, like, school memories of being a kid and growing up, Halo, at least in my town, took over. I would go to kids' houses 
that I'd never been to before. And we'd all set up this giant land party. We had people over at my house as well. Like everybody was playing Halo. Our, our middle school wrestling team used to run out to the Halo theme. Like we were all about, all about <laughs> <so great. laughs> It's a great song. Ba, 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 so. ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a, a tiered system on this answer. So I hope I hope tiered. <laughs> All right, let's, tiered. Do, let's go. This, this is, is prepared. I hope you have a you have 5 minutes because it, it depends on what point of my life what the answer would be. For most of my childhood into like even even late teens, I would have said 100% Nintendo above everything else. And that's a lot of me being raised on those consoles. You know, I had an NES, I had a Game Boy, I had the Super NES, I had a Game Boy Color, I had N64, onwards and onwards. I actually stopped at, at uh, GameCube because at that point in my life, I wanted more adult experiences. So you either had to choose one or the other when you, you had the funds. And so I ended up being a PlayStation kid up until maybe a few years ago, I was vehemently about PlayStation. PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4. I would get in debates back in the day and be pretty. Who I was didn't? one of those people I don't like today who would be like <laughs> championing a brand. They knew nothing of the opposition. They yeah. just were just solely interested in one. The tribalism. Exactly. Yeah. I was such a big Sony kid back then because I didn't know the other side of it. Nowadays, and this is this is my suggestion to people, you can find great video games on all consoles. Everywhere. There are great experiences that are unique to all of them. And that's also why I own every console and I play every console is that Nintendo does stuff that no one else can do. Mm -hmm. They have IPs that are just synonymous with video games and that have eventually bled into every video game afterwards. So if you want the, the granddaddy of video games, Nintendo has all of that. Xbox has a whole library of video games from Xbox One all the way to now uh, that's available on Game Pass. So you can do so much. If you want to start video gaming today, I think your best bang for your buck is Game Pass. You have I agree. so many games that you can play with. You can revisit history. You can play tier like first party Xbox games when they come out. You know, they're very rare nowadays, uh, unfortunately. But it is a, a great thing. PlayStation does the best third party story games, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, Last of Us, Uncharted. A oh, third person, third person. Yeah, okay. God of War. God of War, which will all Spider Man. Yes, which will yeah. also become a, a TV series, uh, uh, by the way. So, like, yes. they they know how to do storytelling. They know how to do, like, cinematic experiences. You know, the Final Fantasy 16. <sighs> and, and Final Fantasy has been, while it has touched everything, is more of a Sony thing. But, mm -hmm. and now, now that I've <laughs> yeah. said all this, uh, PC Mastering <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> because. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you can play everything on there. Except Which I will say, I, I'm still. I'm I'm still rooting for Nintendo to like one day just have because there's so much to to gain out of you know Nintendo having the first party experience and like you buy the Switch you this is the only place you can get these games but man there's a piece of me that's like I would just love 4K Mario Odyssey like just one day I would love to be able to play this in the best possible way right like Nintendo they just license to print money you don't even have to do you can wait years to release them. But release them on the PC, man. Well, so that's the thing with Nintendo, right? Like, they're just going to end up releasing it in five years anyway on a new platform with better graphics, and they're going to make you buy it again. And they're the masters mm -hmm. at that. Yes. And I, and you yeah. know what? They get my money each time, so why? Every time. But, I know. But for example, Mario Kart 8, great game. I want to play it with others, but I find the Nintendo approach to, to online convoluted. If it came to PC, I guarantee you the top 10 selling games for the next three months, Mario Kart will be in it. Yep. Because it's it's a platform that more people have access to. And it's just, your computer is connected to the internet. It's almost guaranteed if you have a computer, you have the internet nowadays, right? I know why Nintendo doesn't release their stuff to PC. Yeah. And and I actually, I appreciate that because it, it, it does give strength to their console. For sure. But for me, the best bang for your buck, if you have the money to get it, is getting a, a new PC and exploring everything you could find practically everything with some slight exceptions even sony will drop their big games a year later now on pc xbox you can straight up play all of them now straight on pc because microsoft owns xbox to me i think pc is the superior choice 
right now. And and that's only because of of access to so much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's about the answer I expected. None of this was surprising. Yeah. I disagree with one thing you said, though, oh, which was oh. the Ooh. fact that you said that there's really nothing uh, Nintendo can't do. But I disagree because I believe there was a commercial that said that Genesis does what Nintendo. Yeah, they, um, that is so true. That- oh! <laughs> Burn! I, here's the thing. I, I would champion a Sega console today. Oh, oh me Because too. I think mm-hmm. Sega's 100%. IPs are incredible. It's, it's unfortunate now they're spread out everywhere, so they have less access to it. But, like, if today they were like, hey, Like a Dragon, Sonic... Shenmue, Streets of Rage, Streets of uh, Rage, and they're not available anywhere else. Yeah, uh, guess what? I'll buy the Sega console tomorrow because I also trust them. Mm-hmm. Both them and Nintendo have tried to mm-hmm. jump one above the other on being at the forefront of video games. You know, like everyone at one point owned the Wii. Everyone, because it was something that no one else was doing. I think it was the best selling console of all time. Exactly, and Switch, for example, started the revolution. I think, I think that's PlayStation Two. Yes, that is oh. true, actually. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> as Switch, for example, led to everyone making handheld consoles again. You know, and, and that's not something that wasn't done previously. There was PS Vita, there was PSP Go, so on and so yeah. forth. But oh, PS Vita. But oh. Nintendo really like championed it, and that that led to other stuff. So, I, if Sega makes a console tomorrow, um, I might revisit this choice and say Sega. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Well, this has been an incredible conversation and look, we could talk gaming all day long, but that's kind of the point here, right? Was that there's so much conversation to be had around video games and video games is such a medium that everybody can relate to. And that is why you should be checking out All Elite Arcade because uh, these conversations continue to be had with Evil Uno, with the Chugs, and uh, you can catch new episodes on your favorite podcast platforms. And it's been so great having you guys here today. Yes. Thank you so much. This, yeah, thanks for having us. This is the best. This feels like every other podcast we've done. And uh, yep. I feel like we could have done another hour. So yeah, Easy. Absolutely. Easy. We'll just put this into your feed so that it's like, yeah, no, we had a conversation about games. It's fine. <laughs> it's One great. Week off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Now you're like, oh, man, episodic content. Oh, no. There's all these new things I have to think about. <laughs> I As soon as the podcast came out, I subscribed. I love it. I love listening to these two talk about video games. I I love talking about video games with these two guys like they're just so informed about everything that is happening in the business but also just so thrilled about everything happening in the business of video games which is probably my favorite part of the whole thing and of course you can catch these guys on aew television dynamite every wednesday collision on saturdays rampage on fridays and don't forget we have roh on thursdays as well there's so much going on you can listen to this podcast also on all of your favorite podcast platforms new episodes every thursday and the video episode drops on mondays i am aubrey edwards with will washington evil uno and the chugs thank you for listening to aew unrestricted Come on, throw your hands up, let me see you. Unrestricted.